okay you should actually have uh, heard the message so uh, good morning good afternoon to everyone welcome to the uni community hours uh, february edition my name is raul osuna i am the release engineer uh, for uni uh, together with uh, marina and i'm going to be presenting the community hours as usual the last uh, times so the agenda for today um, first of all uh, i will be talking about this new tool that you are already seeing uh, and uh, any migration recap that uh, uh, has to be shared about this then i will be talking about the new release of uni 20, 2402 and the new features that have been added uh, then Marina will tell us about the release strategy of the containerized Uyuni. Uh, later on, it will be Pablo uh, presenting a session about the Uyuni Health Check, the, the tool running on top of us of the support config. Then uh, Pascal will be talking about one shot execution of recurring actions. And last but not least, uh, Julio will be telling us something about the documentation, about testing, building, and publishing it with GitHub Actions. So without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, Uni Community Hours Meeting Migration Recap. So as you remember, we were using a different tool that was running on Microsoft Tools, uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, and we have moved to an open source tool that is this Jitsi. And there, there is a new calendar appointment link uh, that is being shared here, but it is also in the wiki. It was probably the one that you use, and it is also sharing the appointment that we sent uh, before the usual uh, edition the last Friday of the month. So uh, regarding the tool, uh, we have tested it in Firefox, uh, Chrome, Chromium, uh, most of the stuff was working in every in all of those. Uh, the recordings, uh, this is something minor, uh, were uh, needed to be run from Chrome, but this is something internal for us. So for you, the community, uh, you can probably use whatever browser uh, you want to use. And if you have any issue, please uh, let us know. Uh, is there any questions that you would like to make about uh, this uh, new model? okay this was uh, an easy one so let's go further to the next topic which is something probably more interesting for you is the new release of uh, uni 202402 that was uh, released uh, actually this monday uh, and as you see it was a little bit earlier in in the calendar month uh, probably uh, better for everyone because uh, sometimes uh, you don't know if it's going to be possible before the end of the month and yeah let's see what's new uh, there were some uh, important cb fixes in this uh, release uh, especially the one regarding the rotation of ssh keys in uni uh, which could uh, affect uh, servers uh, seriously and all those uh, four vulnerabilities have been uh, fixed and then uh, we there is the uni server container image for uh, arm64 ar64 uh, there is a new addition for mgr adm uh, there are new start stop and restart commands and last but not least if you remember from the release notes in the previous version in .01 uh, we reported uh, there in the release notes that the uni tools were uh, not available for debian and Ubuntu as they should, and this has been fixed, and now this is this should be working for Debian and Ubuntu. Is there any questions uh, that you would like to ask about this new release of Uni? Um, by the way, I'm not following the chat, just in case, nothing in the chat. So I guess we can go to the next topic, and this will be uh, Marina talking about the containerized unit, the release strategy. Thanks, Raul. 
Uh, yes, indeed. Um, today I would like to present you this uh, release uh, strategy because, uh, as you notice, at the moment uh, we have uh, uh, two different uh, uh, way to provide the uh, uyoni we have uh, the classical uh, rpm based uh, uh, version but we also have uh, the containerized version and uh, we would like to uh, move completely to the containerized version and for doing that uh, we can simply switch uh, from today to tomorrow leaving you <laughs> just with the surprise uh, that you don't have any more the uh, rpm based uh, version so uh, we tried uh, to provide uh, a um, timetable uh, where uh, we thought in this way you could have uh, enough time for uh, starting to test uh, the containerized uh, version uh, um, report uh, bugs uh, or uh, new features that you would like to, to see and uh, uh, more important uh, at the time to prepare uh, your environment uh, to the to the switch so um, as you see from the table uh, of course the first two releases uh, are, uh, are out and uh, in uh, in those two different versions uh, we have also a mismatch of the post classical version that uh, uh, we are uh, we are providing so with this uh, move to the container um, only version uh, we would like also to uh, make the the maintenance of uh, uyoni uh, easier uh, for us uh, but also for uh, all of you uh, using uh, uh, using uyoni so um, when it comes to the release uh, uh, that um, uh, we could have in March, uh, we are not completely sure that uh, uh, we will uh, uh, make it. Could be that uh, we will need uh, to, to skip it. But even if uh, uh, we will have to skip that release, uh, the, the plan uh, will, uh, will remain the same. So let's say that uh, keeping uh, uh, in mind uh, July as a, as a deadline, uh, that should be your focus for being ready uh, completely uh, to, the, to the switch. And uh, with that release, uh, um, we will provide uh, only uh, Uyoni in a containerized uh, fashion. So this is the timeline. And uh, if you have any question, doubt, uh, or anything else uh, that you would like to share, feel free to do it now or also uh, offline uh, on the discussions uh, or wherever you, you prefer to, to reach out. Thanks. Yes. Uh, yes, a bit distant, but yes. No, no better. Perhaps not sure if this is working correctly. Oh, I'm sorry, my, my mic is not seems to 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 do any work. Sorry for that. No worries. Yeah. I will ask the question by by chance. Okay. Uh, in the chat, there were no questions, but uh, uh, rather uh, excitement about the. Uh, Containerized uh, Uni and especially the IRM uh, version, and Don and Christian are, are going to test it. Uh, Jason is asking: Is there going to be an upgrade tool to convert an existing RPM server to container install? Uh, Ricardo. Um, yes, we are developing a tool um, that will help migrate and manage um, the containerized version. Uh, of uni and you can use it to migrate from uh, one machine to the other so the current tool only works if you use the second server to migrate from the rpm base uh, so we need to, to start a new machine and migrate that uh, but you are considering if we should also make it available to run in the same server where you are running uni right now uh, but you can look at it it's mgr adm it's already public uh, and available for users Okay, and yes, one question that is if uh, the timeline is public anywhere, uh, I'm not sure if this is already published. Um, uh, no, we didn't uh, publish it uh, because the idea was to present it uh, uh, today to all of you and uh, also get some uh, reactions uh, uh, directly directly from you. But uh, I, I don't think it's uh, uh, nothing. Uh, 
to, to keep secret, I would say. Okay. Uh, actually, there is already some reaction. Philip is commenting that uh, he's surprised about the migration RPM to container and whether uh, customer uh, well, uh, users are forced to, to migrate to a container uh, well, uh, with the time uh, line of July. Uh, yes, so uh, the product is not going to be released as RPM uh, any longer. And about how to migrate, uh, the Ricardo just uh, introduced this tool that is being developed to uh, migrate from uh, RPMs to containers. Okay, any follow up about this? It doesn't look like. Uh, well, uh, remember the uh, GitHub discussions uh, and uh, we can continue the, the thread there. Uh, let's get to the next topic then. And if needed, when we finish all the presentations, uh, we can come back to this. So uh, now there is the session from Pablo about Uyuni Health Check running on top of a support config. So, Pablo. Okay, thank you, Raul. Uh, yeah, give me just a second so I can share this. Uh, okay, presenting. Um, now, you should hopefully see my slides now. Yes. Yes, we can. All right. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Pablo Suarez. Um, and today I wanted to show you um, some improvements that um, were made on the latest Hack Week um, around this UniHealth Check Proof of Concept tool that we already presented in a previous community hour. So um, just in case that you are not, uh, you don't know about this thing, um, this is a tool that is um, aiming to provide dashboard metrics and logs from a new uni server to show the health status of the server. And now what we have, well, as mentioned, this was, a, well, this is a proof of concept. We already presented this, but now what is new is that it is now able to run also uh, from the support config information. So you don't really need to have the, the live running server, but you can just use a support config as source for this tool. Um, as I mentioned it the, the other time I presented this, uh, this is container based. It takes care of running Grafana, Prometheus, Loki, and everything that is needed for being able to provide pro, uh, provide, uh, provide you the metrics and, uh, and logs. Um, a little bit about the architecture. So in the live mode, so when you are running this tool against a live server, you basically have a CLI, and then you um reach your new server via local host in case that you are running on the live server or via ssh and then the tool would use potman which needs to be installed on the server to create a few containers which runs the different components inside a pod and yeah that's it but in the end you all you just in, you just use the cli for interfacing with the tool the new part here now um, you can run it as a, um, based on the support config uh, data. So you don't really require to have access to a uni server. You just need to have an unpack support config tarball in your host. And then the tool will take care of spinning the containers and, and then provide you the metrics from the information contained on the support config. Um, yeah, so we have the CLI and just a little bit of information of each one of the containers that we have. Yeah, so we have the different exporters, depending on if we are running from a live server or from support config. Loki, who is the engine that takes care of uh, processing the logs. Uh, Prometheus, Grafana for the dashboard, and uh, this Promptail and Log CLI, which are Loki related that we are using also for, for you know, making the queries for the Loki server, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, some of the latest achievement around this tool, um, as mentioned, now it gathers the metric from support config. There are new improvements on the dashboard, uh, some more CLI arguments like uh, asking for the errors or logs uh, since X day, whatever. Uh, we added also the Postgres logs uh, as a source for front tail, so we can also get errors from there, general bug fixing. So 
yeah, a little bit, a, a few things that we were able to improve. Um, currently, how you can install this tool? So as mentioned, this is still in proof of concepts uh, shape, let's say. So uh, what you just need is to have a Podman and Python pip in your local, in your in your running system. Um, you could use VirtualM, so it's easier for for not you know uh, spreading all the stuff around your environment. And then you can go to to the our Uni project uh, um, GitHub repository where there is this. Um, uh, sorry, the, the, the organization where you can see this proof of concept with Uni Health Check uh, repo where the tool is. For installing it at the moment, pip3 install dot and you have it available. This is how it would, look, it would look like when you call for the help, and I will later show you this working on a demo. So, where we are, what is next? So, well, we need to enhance, as you would see. Uh, currently, we are just showing few information coming from the different sources. So, metrics needs to be enhanced, uh, dashboards, etc. The idea is that, um, according to all the information that we have here, we can display relevant hints, recommendations, and even alerts when we see that something is not really in a good shape uh, in your configuration or in your logs. We are working on integration on the Uni Container server, um, as this is currently not uh, uh, able. Then we are thinking how this tool could be distributed, RPM, registry, whatever. And we are currently in the process of a uh, in the uni development team to do our research and also working on an RFC uh, at this moment. So we can, it's it's clear that from the, the tool perspective, we have, we want to have a, a health check tool. So we are now uh, basically defining how do we want to, uh, uh, you know, how, if we want to make this pr uh, proof of concept um, available, if we are um, integrating the health check tool in some other way. So. These things are now on ongoing discussions. Um, as you know, well, as, 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 I, well, as I mentioned to you here, uh, there is a still few known issues, like some problems when you target the server contain the servers via SSH, or sometime uh, that you might need to wait for Locky to be at level. All right, so let's just have a quick look how this tool works. I hope you can see the uh, console at the moment. Um, and well, what we have here is just the checkout repository of the uh, Uni Health Tech Tool um, proof of concept. So, as mentioned, we need to do like this. I already installed it in my virtual M, but it will be something like that. And now we are able to, uh, sorry, run the health command here. There are two main modes modes of uh, to, to work with. Um, one is with your live server, server, sorry, or having the support, support config. So in this case, uh, I have some support config. So I'm going to run the run command. I'm going to run this verbose so I can get some, um, yeah, uh, nice output there. And I put this one here, I think it was, yes. So let's just run this thing. As mentioned, Botman needs to be installed. If not, you will get some uh, error there. And now it's just building the necessary um, container images and preparing everything to create the necessary containers uh, all inside this uh, new pod that is going to be created. This should take you know, one minute or so. It's not really taking that long. Um, so let's just wait a second. As mentioned, once this tool finishes running, um, it would basically displace your metrics here on the command line, but it would also uh, open and expose the Grafana containers. So it will displace you, uh, well, let's see. It would give you some links so you can access to the dashboard actually. So, okay, this just finished it now. And what we see from here is that this is a kind of a summary of uh, relevant information. Uh, on the salt side, we see the information of uh, jobs that runs on the last 24 hours. 
number of assisted keys, um, information about the soul master configuration. So we see this is, is actually a big environment. So 4K minions. And we can already notice that there is some kind of um, a strange situation because most of the soul jobs are around the mine. So uh, yeah, this was, by the way, on the context of the bagging issues around salt uh, uh, master uh, timeout. So as we see, it might be a problematic here because of the number of uh, jobs there. Uh, as mentioned, when you run this for the first time, you probably don't get the summary of the logs because Loki is not uh, yet um, process all the information. So when you run it twice, or even more than twice, <laughs> you would see at some point, uh, and this is one of the known issues I told you, um, that, um, ah, no, now I know that what is going on. It tells you that there are no relevant logs in the last uh, seven days. And that's expected because this support config is older than uh, this last week. So we can pass this since 30. So it would give you uh, information about the summary of the errors in the last 30 days, as you would see here. And now, hopefully, we would see uh, some more stuff uh, going on here. Um, OK. It's not take that much time. OK, and here you see there are actually a lot of error, most of them on the area of the soul master. But we also see a rich error, et cetera. And it's telling you, OK, you can go to this path to this URL to get some more information. If you run this minus minus logs, you would also get the information about the, I mean, the, the error messages here in the CLI. But um, let's just go here to the browser. So let me see. And you should see now, hopefully, the browser. And I'm accessing localhost, Grafana port, and there is something. And here I see support config with logs in my dashboards. And you see the same information that we were seeing on the CLI. This takes some time to render the, the information about the errors. In this case, no errors, because I'm querying the last seven days. So if I go 30 days, Back, we should be seeing something. Um, yeah, let's just wait a second. Of course, you can search, uh, not search, but you can filter by server components. So if I only want to get the information about uh, sol logs or uh, you know Apache logs or different sources that we may have, then uh, yeah, we just search there. Okay, and this one didn't render fine. Okay, we should see some let me just refresh here is expected that you see um you know the graph with the number of errors by time but it might be that my lucky server is running a little bit slow and it's just timing out but let me just retry so you can see this i'm also showing you data from um, a server or a support config which contains actually a lot of uh, errors so that might also explain why this thing is too long. OK, it's just failing. But anyways, this is just because of timing out. Um, but in the end, what is good here is that you can see um, an, um, um, you know, the cadence of the, and that's really a bit unfortunate that I cannot show this one now, because it's not visualizing here. Um, let me just last. Try if not, but it's really nice because you see now here all the different components, and then you can go to the particular interval, and then you would see here all the different errors according to that interval. So it's a really nice way to uh, visualize and, and the, the you know the, the the order of the logs chronologically, and then being able to filter and see like the picture of what's going on. So yeah. Still an error. Um, I don't want to steal you more time on this one, um, but I will invite you to give it a try. So if you generate your own support config, then you can easily trigger the tool. Or in case that you are, you know, debugging some problem with your Unity server, then you might also run this in live, and you would have a visual representation of all the logs. Then you can see, okay, these are the logs coming from the sole component. Okay, authentication attempt from this minion failed, whatever. So yeah, an easy way to also 
uh, navigate across the, the errors that are produced by the different components on the uh, Uni server in an aggregated way. This is basically the, the key point here. Okay, um, sorry about that because I cannot show you the, the nice picture in the live demo. That happens, you know. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. As mentioned, we are currently working on an RFC. So if you look at a Uni RFC, uh, you will notice at some point soon that we are pro pro uh, publishing a pull request and that we are going to drive some discussions about the tool there. So you are uh, more than welcome also to participate on the discussions there. Good, so that's all from my side. If you have any questions around this, I haven't checked the chat, by the way, so I'm not really sure if- Nothing so far. Come. Okay, good. So yeah, just in case that you have any question. Okay. Uh, you still have time to think about questions and ask at the end of the uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. It won't be so long. So thank you, Pablo. Thank you. Ciao. And let's go back to my slides. Now the next session will be from Pascal and it will be about one shot execution of recurring actions. So Pascal, if you're ready. We can see yeah, so screen. hi everyone. You should be able to see my browser with my reunion installation now. Yes, we um, So the best way to show you is just to give a short demo. So this is some small quality of life change um, for the recurring actions. So if you head to one of your minions and then click uh, the recurring actions tab up here, and then let's start with creating a new one. I'll just put something in here and select uh, the custom state. This is the new kind of re uh, recurring actions. Then you should get the state picker down here. And now let's just for the test purpose of demoing, um, select something and confirm. Then you will now see this execute states button here that is new. So previously, uh, when, when you wanted to test your configuration that you put together down there, uh the easiest way was to select hourly here then look at the current time and select the next minute so um but now with this button here you can schedule it immediately so if we just click that here real quick um, then you will get a message up here that says action was scheduled on the selected minions um, in this case it's just one minion um, so if you then want to check if your action actually completed successfully i recommend you in this case to open a new browser tab because Otherwise, if you just go to the events tab here, unfortunately, your configuration is going to be lost. So um, yeah, we see it's already completed and yeah, it failed in my state, probably because my minion isn't, um, yeah, I didn't boot the minion, so yeah, never mind that. But um, you see that the action gets scheduled. And the same thing also works on, on editing, of course. So if you go to an already existed, existing actions and select like the edit here, then you will also see this tab here. And that's the configuration that you already had. So now you can make some changes here and then confirm them and then it will run the new configuration, but it essentially works the same way um, for here. Then um, if we real quick go to all recurring actions, the same thing is also implemented for groups and organizations. So if we just select, um, a group recurring actions here, uh, this group one. And then it's essentially the same. So I will show you the editing right away. I also have configured an action here and you will also see this execute states button here. So what's different now um, compared to the minion is the minion is of course only one system. The group can have multiple systems. So if you click the execute states button now, instead of immediately scheduling it, um, it will open up a pop-up and you can essentially search here. So if you want just SP5, for instance, then um, yeah, you can filter out your minions here and select one or more and just do the same thing, confirm, and you will then see that this action 
have been scheduled on the minions as well. So you can then head back onto your minion and check if the action executed uh, successfully. And the same also works for the organization. I think I don't necessarily need to show you that. You would just believe me. But yeah, let's just quickly do it. Same thing. Uh, or select an org recurring actions, go to execute states. And actually for testing, I created just, since I have just five systems, um, the group that I just showed you just had all the minions in it um, that I have registered here. Um, but yeah, it's the same for the organization as well. And also works on creating and editing actions. So yeah, I hope this is a really nice quality of life change that makes testing out your actions a little bit yeah, less tedious. Okay, this is all actually already I wanted to show you today. Are there any questions? So I just open up the chat. I don't see any. Yeah, maybe a question that we'll ask the community. Is this already implemented in, in Uni or is going to the next release? So I think if I'm not wrong it also already had been in the last release so not the february release but i think it, it already had been in the january release even so it, it is already part of the uni so if you want to check it out you can do it right away okay thanks for the confirmation great okay so if there is no more questions i will stop sharing and we can move on to the next consultation so thank you everyone Thank you, Pascal. Let me go back to my slides. And now, last but not least, the last presentation from Julio, testing, building, and publish the documentation with GitHub Actions. Julio. Yes, of course. Let me share my screen first. And hopefully, we you can should see, see the first slide, right? Very good. Yeah. Okay, then I'm going to tell you a little bit. Well, first of all, for those of you that are joining for the first time, of course, my name is Julio Gonzalez. I'm now an engineering manager, but those of you that are with us for enough time, you will remember that I used to be a release engineer for Susan Manayan Uni. What I want to discuss today are the improvements that we made to the documentation around GitHub Actions to run tests, build the documentation and even publish it so we can check what's easily what's inside the documentation before we release it. So first I would like to refresh you about the Unit Docs helper because it's a tool that they presented i think some months ago it's basically a wrapper that will call a container image and uh, it will just build a documentation for you if you provide some parameters so there is no need to install the complete tool chain and tora ruby um, node and all the stuff you just install the wrapper you call it it will do everything for you well as I already mentioned, that wrapper is using a container image. And until now, we were publishing that image to the Docker Hub. But for a few weeks now, we are publishing this to the GitHub Container Registry because we are generating such, image, such images automatically from the repository where we are storing the, the wrapper. And for those of you that are curious, just go to the Uni project uh, in GitHub, and then you will see that there is a repository called Unidocs Helper. It's there. For those of you that are already using this tool, then make sure that you run git pull in your local repository so you can start using the new image. The old one, the one that we have in the Docker Hub, is not removed yet, but is not maintained anymore. And at some point, it will go away and you will get errors if you don't git pool then for those that want to help with the maintenance of the wrapper and the container image then be aware that the publishing of the images uh, happens in your forks as well so if you want to test uh, something before merging a pull request using a fork 
then that's something you can do. And for that, now the wrapper allows you specifying a project with a, with a parameter. By default, it will point to the GitHub project to uni project. But of course, if you are using a fork, then the project will be your GitHub username. Uh, with those improvements that we did to the wrapper and that we did to the images, we could improve as well the GitHub Actions that we use for testing, and we implemented something for building and releasing. Testing first. Well, all the relevant actions are now using the image. In the past, those actions, those tests were installed in first, it will change, and that take that takes some time. And of course, something could fail because maybe you're trying to download a dependency from NPM or whatever else, and for some reason, the resource is not available. Now, they are all using the image. That also means that you will get faster feedback from the actions because now the actions are limited, limiting to, limited to just running the actual test that you want to run. Then maybe for those of you that are familiar with the Unidocs repository, you remember that there were a lot of release X, one, two, three, four, five key files. Those are gone because we fixed one of the GitHub actions that was incorrectly committing and pushing this to the repository. Some workflows that were broken and not really needed anymore were removed. So you will see less workflows now, less GitHub actions. And that means that as of today, if you create a pull request for the Unidocs repository, there will be only one test that we are running all the time about the unused files. So if there is something that is not really needed in the documentation anymore, not used in any of the books, then you will get a, an error about that. So you consider removing, removing it. Um, the branches, um, master branch, mana year for three branches, they have the bulk of the other tests about translations, building, and some other things. Um, now, why, before we go into the, into the examples, why do we have the bulk of the other tests only on the branches? Well, because they consume actually a lot of uh, of resources and um, then with that mean that if you're trying to build the documentation building the documentation only for the english language i think it takes like six minutes if we are running this for all the pull requests and we have a lot of pull requests then that means that of course we will we will exhaust the queue that we have for the github actions that said i have some possible improvements for that later but let's have a look at, the, at what we did. So first of all, this is the new GitHub action that is going to build the container image and publish it automatically to the registry. Nothing too fancy, as you can see here. It's just taking care of building according to the Docker file that we specify and then pushing it. Again, remember that if you are doing changes on your forks, then you will get the image built and publish it to the registry on your namespace. Then, as you can see, there was a big cleanup of the different workflows. So now we have only seven of them, if I'm not wrong. But some of them could, could be back later if we find them interesting. So for now, this is the one that is going to build the documentation for each change to the main branches. This is the one that they sorry, this is the one that they mentioned that is running all the time in the pull requests, and all the others are only running on changes to the main branches. This is the workflow that is going to build and publish the documentation when we merge something, as you can see, to master or manager for three. So it's going to build the documentation for Uyuni or for SUSE manager, depending on the branch. Here is only relevant for Uyuni. So of course, it applies when the Git uh, ref name, in this case, the branch is master. And with that, what's probably most interesting for you is that now, if you go to the repository of the documentation and you have a look here at the latest commit, you will see that there is this green check mark. And in the list of checks that were run, there is one about building and publishing, uh, sorry, sorry, building and archiving the documentation from development branches. If you go there, well, 
you can inspect the log to see what happened. In this case, nothing failed. But if we go to the summary, then you can see here that you can download artifacts. So if you, if you download this one, it will just start downloading. It will take a while. Not sure if we can wait. Well, it's only like 20 seconds. So let's wait a little bit. And inside that, you will already have the, there we go. You will already have the documentation. You can extract this zip file and you can check the documentation as HTML files or as PDFs. So there is no need to build this locally to figure out, for example, if a change was currently included and it will uh, currently included in the master branch and if it will be part of the next uni release. And going back to the slides. Sorry, one moment. Going back to the slides, we have some next te next steps about what we can improve. For example, launching the translation jobs only when they are relevant, because right now they are being launched for each commit to the master branch. Then I would like to finish the workflow that we have for building and publishing the documentation for releases. So that will help us to speed up the, the releases. And then something that is going to be relevant for the contributors is that even if I mention that we should not have the job that builds and, and archives the documentation running automatically for all the pull requests, at least I would have I would like to have something that runs on demand. So you can easily check if everything is correct. And then ideally, as you could see, we are publishing, archiving the documentation as zip files at the GitHub repository, but I would like to see that we can deploy what we have in the master branch to some kind of website. So checking what is the latest status is even more easy than it became. And with that, if you have any questions about this, go ahead, of course. Otherwise, you can also ask later on Gitter or the GitHub discussions. Thank you, Julio. Doesn't seem to be it, there. Doesn't seem to be any questions. Uh, so maybe uh, do you uh, have any question regarding anything that we discussed today so long, so far? Okay, it doesn't look like, so if there is nothing else, I would say we can call it a day. And uh, I hope to see you all uh, in the next edition that will be the last Friday of March. And uh, I hope you like the new tool and found it uh, useful and, and be happy about being uh, using open source software, not only at uni, but also for the meeting. So thanks everybody and uh, see you soon. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thanks everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Enjoy the weekend. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.